All right, well, that's it. I think I'm going to start. This is um, this has been the longest time I've gone without playing a gig in 32 years. I turned 50 earlier, uh, well, not earlier this year, tail end of 2019, and I started um, to seriously play music when I was 18. I actually started earlier, but this is the longest I've gone without playing a show since I was 18. I feel kind of weird doing it like this. <clears throat> I'll tell you where I'm at. I was uh, I was uh, planning to do this from my place, from our house, which is uh, south of Mount Juliet, so about half an hour east of, of Nashville. But we got hit by a pretty bad storm on Sunday, and so the power has been out since then. And it's not so easy to connect to the internet without power, obviously, especially if you're out in the country and the, the uh, cell phone reception isn't that great. So I'm here at my good brother Eric Brace's house in East Nashville because he's living in his guest house. And he's uh, typically renting this big house out on, <clears throat> on Airbnb, but obviously there's not so much Airbnb business at the moment. So that's where I'm at. <clears throat> and I'm grateful that I have this space to, to do this from. And I'll shut up with the talking now and play a song for you that I wrote with my friend Trey Hensley. And it's on my, my new record, To Live in Two Worlds. And it's called, I Long to Hear Him Testify. <laughs> Way downtown Atlanta, where the streetcars run. Early in the evening, before the day is done. If I was in Georgia, I'd tell you where I'd go. I'd hear Blind Willie singing, Mama, turn your If I was in Mississippi, around Tonya Town, I'd go from door to door, listening for the sound of that hard time killing floor in the minor key. Skip James singing the blues. To, to open deep One foot in a world that's gone And one foot here today And what I would give To hear him sing and play Long ago and far away Yet they're still alive but I long to hear them testify in 1925. And if I was a traveler of Carolina way, nine years ago, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd hear Charlie and his ramblers playing. Some old shaft, and maybe I would stick around and never make it back. One foot in a world that's gone, one foot here today. What I wouldn't give to hear him sing and play long ago, far away. They're still alive, but I long to hear them testify. Nineteen twenty-five. Well, I'm thinking about a freight train on 
southern band Rails ringing in my head Let your deal go down It's strange times in the country Caught here in between All right. I want to hear him testify. Yeah, I want to tell you something too. Um, if you want to donate something, uh, please don't feel obliged to do so. But if you want to do that, um, I'm going to donate whatever you donate to uh, an organization called Dogwood Alliance and Alliance, and it's uh, it's an organization that um, works to preserve um, Appalachian forests and trees that are native to to Appalachia. So that's something that's near and dear to my heart and if you like forests then you should consider that and if you don't like forests then uh i don't know what to do with you so uh consider that it's called the dogwood alliance it's a beautiful thing and we love very much what they do so let me uh get my guitar into the different tuning here and if you're if you're into guitars the guitar I'm playing here today is is a guitar that I bought from my buddy Trey Hensley, which I who's the, the gentleman that I wrote this last song with. And this is a 1965 Martin Triple O 18, typically not one of the more sought after years of Martin guitars, but um, an incredible guitar, probably my favorite guitar that I have. Just feels right, it's set up so well. Um, it intonates super great all across the fingerboard and it just feels good in my hand and uh, I'm glad that Trey let me have it. All right, here's a song that um, that I wrote with uh, Tim Stafford, one of my favorite guitar players and songwriters and singers too. I love Tim singing. He's in a, Tim's been in a bluegrass band called Blue Highway for the last 26, 27 years and I've always admired his, his writing and he loves history and I do too. And um, we wrote this song a couple years ago, and it's about a gentleman called Cecil Sharp, who was a British guy who came to uh, Southern Appalachia between 1916 and 1918. He was a folk song collector, and he knew that there were certain British ballads that he couldn't couldn't locate in England anymore. But he knew that they were still in people were still singing them in in uh, Appalachia. So he came here and traveled all across Western North, North Carolina and uh, Southern Virginia and East Kentucky and East Tennessee looking for these songs and published them, published them in two books, um, English folk ballads from Southern Appalachia. And um, if you're into that kind of stuff, you should check him out. Anyway, he's a big inspiration to me. He's, uh, he was born in Europe and came here to find the music that he loved much like I did in my own way. I was born in Germany and raised by a pack of wolves in the Black Forest, as you, some of you know. And uh, I found my way, made my way here to, to pursue this country music and folk music. And I'm glad I did. So here's a song uh, for Cecil, for and about Cecil Sharp. It's called Where the Bluebirds Call. Mm -hmm. 
searching for a song up in the mountains, looking for a ballad in those hills. Sometimes it felt as if the old tune was found out. So far away, the music haunts him still. And England is a cold place in October. Virginia is so pretty in the fall. He tells himself if he could do it all, he'd end his days where the bluebirds call. There is no place else so pleasant in his memory. Melody and story intertwine. Hour after hour spent in reverie. Listening on the front porch in the pines. England is a cold place in October. And Virginia is so pretty and far. Tells himself if he could do it all. Even his days where the bluebirds call. Sweet William in his long and narrow grave. The briar and the rose together swell. And the girl who died for the love she gave. And one is a cold place in October. And Virginia is so pretty in the fall. He tells himself if he could do. He'd end his days where the bluebirds call. There's that for Cecil Sharp, good Englishman who collected a lot of good folk songs. Also sent this out to my friend Lincoln Grounds in, in Sudbury. He's taken a hiatus from social media or so he says, but um, I don't know. Maybe he does, maybe he don't. Whoever, who knows anything anymore? Um, all right, since I'm in this tuning and uh, being here in, in Eric's house, he's got so many great books all over this house. There's a whole section over there in one of those bookshelves that's all about the California gold rush and trains. And I love trains. Um, having been from Europe, I, I, uh, I love traveling by train whenever I'm over there. It's a, it's a very elegant way of travel. And as you can tell by my attire tonight, I'm a very elegant person. So I, I like traveling like that. Um, this is the first song that I wrote with my dear friend, Tammy Rogers who's the fiddle player and, and singer and founding member of the, of the Steel Drivers. And uh, we were seated at a, together at a table at, a, at an industry event here in Nashville. And we were both sort of reluctant to be there, but we had a really good time. I had a couple of drinks together. My wife was there and, and her, her husband, Uncle Jeff was there. And we had a real good time and we exchanged phone numbers and decided that we really needed to write songs together. So. Uh, there's a couple songs that we wrote that that are on the new Steel Drivers record called "Bad for You" that you should go and check out. But this one is is the first one that we ever wrote, and and uh, it's uh, it's one of my favorites that we ever wrote because it's about my love of uh, far old railroads, and it's weird singing this in Eric's house, knowing that Eric is over there, like uh, I don't know, I don't know maybe 40 feet away or something. 
and we can we've been singing this song together many many times it's weird that we can't do this now because we want to be uh, respectful and of and then do the whole social distancing thing and not put the wrong message out there so we actually wrote a song yesterday he was sitting over on his side of the porch and i was sitting over on this side of the porch and worked pretty good but anyway this is one that i wrote with, with tammy rogers it's called old railroads <laughs> Should also mention that Eric uh, recorded this song with his band Last Train Home on their on their latest record that came out uh, at the end of last year. You should check it out. It's a beautiful record. Um, all right, let's see what else we're going to do here. Oh, okay, I got one. Um, this is uh, this song means a lot to me for for many many different reasons. First of all, it's it's a song that I wrote with Peter Cooper, who's one of the best dudes in the world, and and uh, another one of my good brothers, and there's only a, uh, about a handful of people that that um, are part of that brotherhood, and I don't use that uh, term lightly. And um, anyway, Peter is probably out there tonight listening to this. We wrote this a couple of years ago with another uh, dear, dear friend called Mac Wiseman. He's uh, 
not with us anymore. Mac passed away um, in 2019. He was 93 years old. If you know, if you're interested in bluegrass music, you know who he is and what he did. One of the one of the best singers ever. He was uh, he was not a mountainy kind of singer. He was more of a crooner. He loved Brandon Dalhart and people like that. And um, we were fortunate enough to to be friends with Mac and. Um, he always told us these stories about his life and long story short, one day Peter and, and I said, man, would you consider turning these stories into songs with us? And so Peter and I went over there to his house, which is just 10 minutes from my house for a couple of months every Sunday afternoon. And Mac would sit in his big easy chair because he couldn't get around well anymore and tell or retell these stories. And we would rhyme them up as Mac would call it. and by melodies to him. And so those were some of the most enjoyable months of my life going over there and sitting with the great old man and, and writing these songs and with Peter. And uh, this song here, I sang the song, is the, is the, the song that became the title cut of that, of, of that whole record. And uh, every line in this song is something that Max said at some point or another, and we just wrote it down and changed it up a little bit to make it rhyme. And so um, Mac couldn't get around so well anymore, like I said. So we, we, uh, we asked uh, some of his friends and the people that he had influenced to come in and sing these songs. And so uh, Sean Camp and Jim Lauderdale and Alison Krauss and the Isaacs and Junior Sisk and Sierra Hall and Justin Moses and just some of the, our favorite people came to sing for and about Mac. And John Prine did as well, because John had made a record with Mac. And um, so, as you know, John passed away a couple of weeks ago from this coronavirus thing. And it's just, it's just too much to even think about. Still, it was another, it was a full moon night, as I remember, which I think we're in a full moon right now, probably about four weeks ago. And I remember I was sitting outside and I heard the news and I texted Eric and I, I said, John Prime is dead and it's, Oof, still kills me to think about that. Anyway, John sang the song on the record and it was written from Mac's perspective of looking back at a long life. And, and now with John gone, it's, it's, uh, it puts him, puts him into another perspective altogether. Anyway, here it is. I could hear the highway come long before Dreams are free, not much else. What else can go boat do? Cali friends to cliffs of doors. Name a city I've been there. Women laugh and babies cry. Sounds the same old story. Baptized in the old South, three times forward I've been blessed. Just another young hill Who would have thought we could have guessed? Gordon Lightfoot A P Car Mother May June and John. It ain't bragging if you've done. Name the tune I sang the song. And now I'm old. No way to hide. I wouldn't care to truth be told. Once a man twice a child but I've got a hand to 
I could hear the highway call long before the road went through. Dreams are free, not much else. Is. What else can a poor boy do? Dreams are free, not much else. Is. What else can I sang the song for Mag Wiseman and John Prine. All right, I think we've got time for one more. And this is my new single. Came out um, last week on Friday, and it's to commemorate the flood of 2010 here in Nashville. And I got to do this really quickly because I only have four more minutes. Anyway, you want to donate something to the Dogwood Alliance? Donate to them or donate it to me, and I'll promise it'll get to them. Um, you want to buy CDs? Go to my website. Um, who knows when we'll be able to do these things like uh, we used to with us being on the stage or in, in somebody's house and playing these songs. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we'll do the best we can with this. Thank you for tuning in. Much love to you mm -hmm. all and stay safe. <laughs> Rain came pouring down for days, the kind we've never seen. Like from the book of Genesis, swelling all the streams. Stones River and the Cane Fork were rising by the hour. Water so much mightier than any human power. And up and down the Cumberland, they'll say, Remember. And then they'll tell the stories of the flood of 2010. Creeping up on lower rocks and honky tonks and bars, 40 feet above the banks, right up to room guitar. Shutting down the Opry as they had to move the show Up to the war memorial, it's home from long ago And up and down the Cumberland, they'll say remember when And then they'll tell the stories of the flood of three ten. Over on the west side, it's where they did the worst. The harp that rushed into the homes like some old evil girls. So many fled with nothing but what their hands could hold. While everything they left behind was lost to money And up and down the Cumberland, they'll say, remember. Then they'll tell the stories of the flood of Trinity. But from everywhere the people came and helped each other out. And that we still can stand as one was proved beyond a doubt. The spirit of the city rose up to guide our way. Nashville's brightest moment born from its darkest day. And up and down the Cumberland, they'll say remember when. And then they'll tell the stories of the flood of three ten. Yeah, up and down the Cumberland, they'll say remember when. And then they'll tell the stories of the flood of three ten.